The year is 2017. Crowds gathered outside with their paper glasses to witness a total solar eclipse. Taylor Swift had just dropped her highly anticipated Reputation album, and a brand new magic set was looking to shake up the type of world by reinvigorating some beloved and, well, yet to be loved creature types. Hi, welcome to MTG. My name is Ken, and if you would let me, I would love to take a trip down memory lane as we look back on the four creature types that cemented themselves as the best and baddest monsters of Ixalan. Over the next four videos, I will highlight one of the creature types that made their mark on the plane of Ixalan. We will explore the creatures before Ixalan released, what Ixalan brought to the game, as well as how the creature type evolved since the original release of Ixalan. As for the first video in the series, I thought we would start with a bang and we would take a look at the dinosaurs of Magic the Gathering. Before we start looking at the specific cards and mechanics, I thought I would take a moment and describe the setting of Ixalan, as well as the flavor of the set. Taking place on a remote, jungle-covered island, the original setting of Ixalong saw four competing factions, the Sun Empire, River Heralds, Legion of Dusk, and Brazen Coalition, all searching for the lost city of Araska, in hopes of acquiring the Immortal Sun. Each group had their own motives, and as they battled inside the temple, it was then that the Immortal Sun awoke and unleashed six elder dinosaurs upon the lands of Ixalong. Prior to Ixalan, we did not see any dinosaur creature types. Instead, dinosaur-like creatures were categorized as beasts or lizards. In preparation for the release of Ixalan, wizards retconned 14 creatures and gave them the proper dinosaur creature type. Some of those creatures included Deathmist Raptor, a 3-3 death toucher with Megamorph that could reanimate itself, Fungusar, a 2-2 green fungus dinosaur that gained counters when it was dealt damage, which is an effect we were about to see a lot more of and Tyranix, a 6 mana 5 4 that could pump its own toughness at the expense of power. However, this won't be the last time we discuss good old Tyranix. Without the proper typing, nor a viable legend, dinosaurs would not have a seat at the EDH table until the release of Ixalan. As the initial spoilers for Ixalan began, we started to see dinosaurs popping up all over the place, with the majority of new dinosaurs being white, red, or green. It was clear that the new official color wedge to represent the dinosaurs would become Naya. Aside from the color identity, a few other trends were seen in the new slew of dinos. For starters, many of the dinosaur creatures were large bodies with higher than average mana values. Keywords like trample and haste would be seen commonly as well. As for the signature mechanics, we would be introduced to the enrage mechanic. Enrage states, if a creature is dealt damage, X happens. Not dissimilar to the fungus I discussed prior, each creature within Rage had a different and unique effect. I decided to highlight five dinosaurs from the set and break each one down. Ripjaw Raptor is a 4 mana 4 5 and is our first example of the Enrage mechanic. In exchange of being dealt damage, Ripjaw draws you a card. The next card we will look at is Goring Ceratops, a 7 mana 3 3 that grants double strike to your entire team, assuming it sticks around long enough for it to attack. Improving my earlier point about high mana costs, the next creature is a whopping 8 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Awakening Sun's Avatar is a one-sided extinction event that will wipe out every non-dino creature on the board. I of course cannot go without mentioning the greatest and most feared dino in all the multiverse. Colossal Dreadmaw. This below average common has managed to trample its way into many hearts since its conception, being featured in both the Ixalan and March to the Machine set teaser trailers. So now that we have plenty of prehistoric pals to fill our dinosaur decks, we need a leader. And there was only one name suitable for such a role. Gishath, Sun's Avatar. Still considered the best dinosaur commander to this day, Gishath is an 8 mana 7-6 that cheats out dinosaurs from the top of your deck on combat damage. This bomb of a creature hits the ground and swings immediately, which almost always means you'll get at least one activation of its ability. Rivals of Ixalan was a follow-up set and it released in early 2018. While small, the set added many more powerful dinosaurs into the game as well as six new elder dinosaurs. Rivals brought us cards like Thrashing Brontodon, a three mana creature with the ability to destroy an artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. Wayward Swordtooth is a crucial early game piece that can you extra land drops. This creature also sees plenty of play in non-dinosaur decks as well. Trap Draw Tyrant brought with it the continuation of the Enrage mechanic, this time exiling a creature anytime it is dealt damage. Now let's talk Elder Dinosaurs. Featuring a dino in every color as well as a three color leader, the Elder Dinosaurs were all high cost bombs that would see varying levels of playability. 
Starting off with easily the most overlooked and underplayed Elder Dinosaur is Tetsumok Primal Death. This black 6-6 looks to snipe out a single creature from the battlefield at the mere cost of 7 mana. It being outside the typical dinosaur colors too didn't help its case much either. Galta, Primal Hunger, was your quintessential big green stompy creature. Its ability to be discounted significantly made it an easy include for any deck that cares about power and or dinosaurs. Zeltalpa, Primal Dawn, is a basket of keywords, seeing a home in almost every white precon made by wizards. While threatening and difficult to deal with, Zeltalpa is far from the most powerful of the elder dinosaurs. Itali, Primal Storm, on the other hand, has the potential to devastate your opponents. This 6-6 six, six for 6 looks to cheat spells off the top of your opponent's decks. Unfortunately, the thing holding this card back most is a requirement to attack and its lack of haste. If only it had an ETB effect. Lurking below in the dark waters of Ixalan lies Nezahal, Primal Tide. A 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven, this blue monster has the potential to shift any game in your favor. Its card draw engine, along with the ability to protect itself, means that killing this beast will be nigh impossible. Being a blue creature, Nezahal doesn't find itself slotted amongst many other dinosaurs, but instead it's a key strategy piece in any blue draw or discard deck. Saving the best for last is the elder dinosaur of all elder dinosaurs, Zakama Primal Calamity. This Naya behemoth touts some of the most terrifying and awe-inspiring art to be seen in magic. This three-headed creature repays itself instantly on ETB and then gives you a Swiss army knife of abilities to sink said mana into. Sakama was the first dinosaur commander to rival that of Gishath. With Ixalan now in the rearview mirror, dinosaurs had finally been given a seat at the commander table. With a solid identity and flavor, it wouldn't be long until we saw dinosaur support coming from other sets. Corset 2019 brought with it a handful of notable dinosaur cards like Rampaging Brontodon, a Lands Matter Trampler, Runic Armasar, a 3 mana card draw engine, and Gigantosaurus, a 10 10 beater you can cast for only 5 mana, granted you have the required pips. Our next dinosaur filled set would come with the set Ikoria, Lair of the Behemoth, in 2020. While this set more focused on the relationship between humans and beasts, it wasn't without a handful of dinosaur creature types. This set saw the introduction of Mutate, a mechanic allowing creatures to converge their abilities as one. While this mechanic was innovative and a personal favorite of mine, its clunky execution and overall mixed reception meant that many of the new dinosaurs released in the set wouldn't see much play outside of Limited. One creature from the set I did want to shut out is Quartzwood Crasher, a green and red trampler that would create more dinosaurs upon combat damage. An easy bar to clear in a deck filled with big creatures. While not part of the main set, the Ikoria Commander decks did bring us a new dinosaur in the form of Calamex the Stormsire. This teamer beast cared about casting instants and sorceries and would copy them as long as it was tapped. Aside from its creature type, this commander didn't care much about the dinosaur archetype as a whole. As we close the gap between old and new Ixalan, I wanted to shout out a few more one-off dinosaurs that would become title staples over the years. Debuting in Conspiracy, Regal Behemoth was a mana doubler that introduced the monarchy into any game it was played. With large scary dinosaurs lining your side of the battlefield, it was an uphill battle for anyone looking to steal the monarchy away from you. Terrorizing the streets of New Capenna is the always verdant Topiary Stomper, a relatively inexpensive creature that tutored a basic land upon the battlefield. Many were to immediately call out its similarities to Wayward Swordtooth upon release. Seeing its reintroduction into the game after almost 20 years, Tyranix Rex looks to ruin your day with a devastating toxic ability as well as its built-in protection. March of the Machines saw a multi-plane showdown that had creatures from all walks of life battling the Phyrexian hordes. This set, and its follow-up set, Aftermath, let us take a look in on the planes we had been familiar with like Ixalan and Ikoria. From this set sprung some new fun legendary dinosaurs from both sides of the war. Galta returned, now teaming up with Mavrin from the Dusk Legion, seeing an unlikely duo of dino and vampires. We also saw the shocking return of a beloved elder dinosaur. Itali Primal Conqueror was a more complete version of its former self, now triggering its steel effect upon entering the battlefield versus on attack. This new addition to the collection was an immediate multi-format staple. That is all to say that this card also flips into a pseudo Blightsteel Colossus as its built-in wing con. When I started my research for this series, we had only just begun seeing what was coming in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. But now, 
We have seen everything that the set has to offer, and I needed to add a follow-up section. Along with Lost Caverns, we also received a handful of brand new cards in the Universes Beyond Jurassic Park product, as well as a designated dinosaur pre-con. We have a whole new slew of dinosaur cards, as well as new commanders. While Naya still reigns supreme in regards to color identity, we now have the ability to build dinosaur decks in Teamer, Gruel, or even Jund. I would go as far to say that we have entered the dinosaur renaissance with the release of this new set. Exciting new creatures and brand new strategies are now possible thanks to the most recent wave of cards. It brings me joy to know how far this creature type has come and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. What are your thoughts on the dinosaur archetype? Are there any cards I didn't include that you think need mentioning? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel, you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. In the next episode of the series, we'll be peeking inside the world of vampires. But until then, have a good one and I will see you next time.